Happy Halloween, citizens of the Reject Nation. We are here, and it is time to check out Michael Myers in the final, definitely, absolutely, never coming back again Halloween film, Halloween Ends. But before we go into that, I'm joined by our very good friend, Andrew Gordon of the Movie Source Channel. Andrew, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. It's Halloween. I'm entitled to one good scare. That's right. And hey, we mustn't forget that evil dies tonight. It does. It does. It or, does. Or perhaps after a time jump. I don't know much about this movie other than I've heard the responses are all over the place, which gets me very excited. I liked the 2018 version. I did not like Halloween Kill all that much. We just want it to be better than the 1978 version. That's all we're asking. That's okay? really, the bar's pretty low. But anyway, if you guys could go ahead and leave a like on this video, leave a comment with your thoughts on Halloween Ends, the franchise as a whole. We would love to hear from you. Also, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and if you want to get the full experience, come on over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash therealrejects. You can sync up with us with your own copy of Halloween Ends. Enjoy all the little moments that don't make it to the reaction. And we also got a bunch of other exclusive over there with reaction highlights and watch alongs included. And finally, big, big thank you to the prepper people cutting down these highlights. It is a task and we appreciate them very much. Uh, that's all the housekeeping. It's it's time. It's it's finally here. The end of the Halloween franchise. Are you ready, Andrew? I'm ready. Then let's get to it. Music's really setting the tone. I like it. I'm, I'm here for it. I like a good Halloween party vibe, you know? Sorry this is last minute, but Andrea got a stomach bug and literally just called me. No, it's, okay. it's Roger's company Halloween party, and I could care less, but... It's not Halloween without Takata and Fugue. Jeremy, the sitter's here! Jeremy! <laughs> the creepy staircase. Whoa! <laughs> No TV. You guys can play till 8.30, 8.45, then he should go to bed. Easy money. Yes. <laughs> Dad, don't play with me or what? <laughs> that sounds like a threat. It's Halloween. We're going to have a good time tonight. Oh. All right. <laughs> yes! yes! Oh, my God. Paying respects to John Carpenter. You just saw this for the first I time, did. too. Look at that. Okay, man, it's gonna get you. He's not gonna get me. Michael Myers kills babysitters, not kids. Oh. Uh, he does kill kids in this universe, too, though. Yeah, ask the kid who wanted to dance. <laughs> I want to watch this movie, and I don't really feel like pretending to be best friends with an ugly ass boy babysitter. <laughs> wow, dude. Get five minutes, and then you're going to bed. You suck at babysitting. I'm not a babysitter. <laughs> this strikes me as interesting. It's like you, you rarely see a boy babysitter. <laughs> I've done it before. I would let you babysit my kids. Thanks, John. All five of my kids. Jeremy, turn that movie off. Uh, uh. This isn't funny, Jeremy. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> uh oh. Man, he didn't even take the milk. Jeremy. Jeez. Dang. Hey, let me out. Are you scared? Jay? Jeremy, let me out. Let me out. Oh, boy. I'm gonna kill you, Jeremy. Cut. Oh, oh, no. Oh. What's that? Oh! 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 No! Wow! Oh God! No! Please! Me. Oh my God! That's not what I was expecting. Oh, please, no. what have you done? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> A subversion of expectations. And the and the blue font like like Halloween three. Like a season of the witch. Michael Myers was pure evil. He took our dreams and turned them into nightmares. Ooh. 
40 years later, he escaped. And Haddonfield was once again forced to confront this man in a mask. That sucks. Michael Myers was the personification of evil. So I guess he retired from being a babysitter. Yeah, he's not going to get another gig pretty anytime soon. <laughs> Watching kids. <laughs> hey, uh, Ronald. Thanks. No problem, kid. That guy's going to die horribly. I'm going to be sad when it happens. He's going to die in the compactor. <laughs> like a little child's play three action. The best child's play. Oh, by far. <laughs> We're seniors, okay? We've been practicing for a show the whole year, you know, Loading up for uh, tonight's game and or in the fucking marching band. <laughs> Fires a couple of six packs. Uh, no, no. On the marching band. You're that psycho babysitter. He killed that kid, didn't he? Yep. Killed a kid and two pussy to buy some fucking. You know what? Let's get the stakes, Terry. Get hard. That's right. Right. So where's your next victim? Oh wow! Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, Ooh. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeesh. Would you look at this? I mean, a psycho meets a freak show. <laughs> wow. Can't this wow. is a match made in heaven. Hey, come on, look at the for now. Let's go, y'all. <laughs> if anyone deserved to die. Oh, oh. Uh. Uh. So do you want to do it? Or you want me to? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call. So. And in 2022, those are cheap to replace. <laughs> this gentleman had an accident and needs a little fix up. That was a creepy look. Yeah. <laughs> hey there. You're going to feel a little bit of a pinch here. Cute, isn't she? Ah. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Sorry, sorry. No, no, my fault. It was my fault. I'm so sorry. I'm a mess. This guy's going to become the accident prone Michael Myers. He's going to have like a killing spree based off of mishaps alone. So your job sucks too. Huh? Where do you work? Yeah. Do yeah. <laughs> we should go out sometime and do something. With me? With both of us. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh no, I got the death card. No, that just means a major phase is ending and a new one is about new to begin. Beginning. So that pretty much puts a nail in the coffin with that police officer you were dating. What you really don't want is the tower. That is a scary card. Someone that can let go. That makes you want to rip off your shirt and show grief your f***s and say, you know what? Let's go. This is delicious. <laughs> Good transition. Sure, yeah. Who's that person you're texting? It's not. I didn't see them exchange numbers. Did you? Plot hole. She got it from the hospital. <laughs> Someone's dying in that compactor. I'm I calling. No, dude. <laughs> the question is how many people? Left hand is your uh, clutch. Right foot is your back brake, and uh, left foot is the shifter thingy. Simple. Doesn't sound simple. <laughs> Yo, Corey! <laughs> the car he put it on. My goddamn son drove three miles on the flat because he doesn't know how to change a tire on a goddamn automobile. Genius. Ah, see, he's a victim of circumstance. He wouldn't be such a jerk if his pops wasn't such a jerk. I like how his dad slapped him in public. You know, she's been talking to this guy. You probably know him, Corey Cunningham. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's a good kid. He had a tough break. It's nice to know somebody's out there looking out for him. Cunningham. Oh, Sean S. Cunningham? Yep. <laughs> I understood that reference. I just got my license. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Do you see what he did to my sister? He killed her husband. Oh, she's still alive. Oh, Damn. shit. You tempted and you provoked that man when you should have left him alone. 
I can't believe she survived that. Call James A. Janice. Gonna have to update that kill count. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. I would like to see those cherry blossoms. And I think you'd like them too. Well, it's not the first time they retconned a death in this series because Will Patton's character, we all thought he died in the 2018 yeah. version, too, from Dr. Sartain. Absolutely. The Sanderson sisters are going to be singing here, right? Sisters? The, the Sandersons could take down Michael Myers. Oh, for sure. That's a battle we need to see now. That, that's the versus movie we, we never knew we wanted, but we absolutely deserve. <laughs> Definitely. Ah, the devil, Halloween 5. Mm -mm. Remember the girl in the devil costume? Yeah, There's yeah. another reference. Holy scarecrow. See anything you like? Yeah, <laughs> see anything you like? Like the OG Michael Myers cameos. The guy that killed that kid. Don't listen to her, Allison. You can be with whoever you want to be with. I wonder if that's the same bar from Halloween Kills. Probably. With their knack for bringing everything back, I wouldn't be surprised. It's probably the most fun this guy's had in literal years. Hey man, can I get a beer? Oh no, no. Oh jeez. Evil, evil dies tonight. And you think you can fix me, but you can't. I'll spare you the heartache. No. Romance dies tonight. <laughs> oh, is it these kids again? No. The, the best kids. I want to apologize. Handshakes and friendship. Don't leave him hanging, dude. Yeah. Dollar store designer friend? Oh. No. Uh, I, I hate when people crush the glasses. He hates me. Oh. Billy. He hates me, huh? Oh. Knock it off. Billy. He hates me. Billy. Oh. No. Oh, shit. Whoa. Whoa. Damn. He fell. Well, busted it. Is he dead? Go down and look. You go down and I didn't push nobody. He fell. Bullshit. He fell? Yeah, that's my story. <laughs> the cycle now, Terry. Megan is missing. The cycle? Oh, it. Get in the car, Margo. Kill the kid, man. Why are you still hanging with them? <laughs> and it won't stand hey. Uh oh. Now my hands do the one. My knees do the floor. Uh. That's such a creepy image. Now it's the Jason remake. Yeah. Oh, damn. Whoa. Pass all his knowledge down to him. <laughs> now like, you can survive anything. Downloaded the matrix of murder into his mind. <laughs> you go back in there and you get me that man. I'm Michael Myers. Ooh. It is Rob Ooh. Zombie's Michael Oh, jeez. Oh no. Oh no. This guy's just always in the wrong place at the wrong time. I know. You should have wiped that thing off before you threw it, bro. No hard feelings about the promotion, right? Of course not. You deserve it. <laughs> I thought for sure Dr. Mathis was going to make you the charge nurse. Jeez. Have a little humility. <laughs> yeah. She was excited for the promotion. No hard feelings. I thought you were going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. 
Oh, jeez. Waiting for Allison. I didn't mean to scare you. I just hid. I wanted to say that I'm sorry and there's no excuse, but if you could please, if you could just take a walk with me. Oh. Oh, no. She's getting psycho vibes, bruh. I'm sorry I lost my head at the party. And I walked away. That was a mistake. You told me that you want to burn it down. Oh, you tell me you want to burn it down. Hey. Oh, no, the cop. Made a sponge cake. You two want to stop by and get a slice after whatever you guys okay, are doing. good. Okay, you're good? Well, let me tell you, it's uh, change your mind. She you? said we're good. Ooh, 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 ooh. Allison, so you call Mr. Aggravated Manslaughter at night when you can't sleep? Mm. Oof. You feel safe with this guy? Uh, uh, everyone's an asshole in this I town. No. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, Lori. I knew I didn't trust that car. God, if only it was Lori. I have a feeling it's one of the cops or something. Oh, could be. Good call, John. My man. Oh, no. Whoa, Jesus. Oh, he's definitely cracked. Whoa. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, that was good. a cool shot. Whoa, ah! damn. Uh. You really able to just kick off Michael like that? I mean, Michael is pushing like 70. <laughs> Still. <laughs> Get up! Okay, okay. No one's ever talked to me like this before. Holy kid. Ooh. Ooh. It's all like oxidated. <laughs> yeah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel the power of murder. Does it hurt? No. no. It feels good. You're showing lots of signs of a man you should not date. <laughs> nah, this is perfectly healthy trauma bonding. <laughs> Oh, here we go. It's like, I'm too decrepit to fight you, Lori. Yeah. It's like the perfect story of Haddonfield in a way. Perfect Cute coworker. young girl falls for local creep. Imagine if your grandmother had fallen in love with Michael Myers. <laughs> Everyone's an asshole in this town. As much as people dog the Rob Zombie movies for explaining Michael, it does feel like Haddonfield is full of shitty people. I can't really blame him for turning out this way. <laughs> Let's find a way to forgive this kid. And I pull up next to him, and he looks at me, and it's not him. Oh. At least not in the eyes. I don't know, man. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up. Huh. Kid who used to mow our lawn didn't kill my son. I know that. But the guy I saw on the side of the road was down a dark path. It was pure evil. Evil! Mind if I... If I'm still in the hall. Clean up, take a shower. In fact, I'll meet you in there. <laughs> yes. Hate to see you leave, but I love to watch you go. <laughs> Holy shit. Is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> Dr. Mathis? 
<laughs> He's still calling him Dr. Mathis. Wowie! Uh, uh, Damn, ow. Wants this girl to get a promotion. Uh. Uh. Whoa. Uh. Stick around. Oh, yeah, it's one of his classic kills. Oh, Bob from the first one. Yeah. yeah. Man, I thought that was going to be Corey and Michael on the bike. <laughs> it will be by the end. Look at you. You going to make a little name for yourself now, huh? Walking around with this dumb bitch right here. You never shut up. Everyone's amazing in Haddonfield. <laughs> love them. I want to live here. Y'all get the hell up off my property for I love <laughs> I've never wanted to see Michael murder so many people in my life. I want to be with you. Okay. I was a couple scenes off when she was going to surveil them. I can smell her on you. She's trying to take you away from me. Oh, God. That's where you go every night. Well, I say, go. Well, you go right now. All right, kill your mom. Let's go. Whoa. Oh, what? The? Oh, no, no. Oh, geez. Whoa, whoa. Okay, that was a weird scene. <laughs> yeah. You can't have her. Allison is not equipped for this relationship. So stay the f away. You started this. You brought me in. You invited me. You want to do it, or you want me to? I have a prediction here. You secretly hope Michael comes back for you. <laughs> I'm the psycho. You're the freak show. <laughs> Call back to the gas station. You got something I need. Oh. <laughs> Don't forget who's the master here. Yeah. I, I, I am just a man, and I always match. What are you gonna do now? Oh, he got it. Damn, that was hard. <laughs> Barely an inconvenience. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> It's like I taught him too much. The same thing in him that I saw in Michael. Michael, Michael Myers is who you are. You're not listening uh. to me, Allison. I am trying to protect you. I don't want your protection. <laughs> you want me to believe you? Because of the hysteria that you caused when I trusted you. My friends are dead. My parents are dead. You're the one that's capable of. Oh. Oh. God, where'd he go? I'm out, Corey. Corey, I just want to kiss and make up, my man. Come on. I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. <laughs> Come on, Billy. Let's get this punk. Let's go. Oh my God, Billy. Billy, what are you trying to do, man? Suck your own. Oh my God. Oh, wow. <laughs> Billy's dead. What? What are you talking about? Hmm? Oh my god. <laughs> Don't wanna be your monkey ranch. Oh, good. <laughs> You're gonna be like, I was always good to you, Corey. <laughs> I was always good to you. Oh. Uh... I got you. Oh, no. I got 
Oh, Jesus Christ, no. No! Oh, damn, wow, that, that was a good disappear, though. Oh, my. Wow! Whoa! Whoa! Oh. <laughs> that reminded me of the Dr. Sartain kill. Yeah. No compactor. What gives? Carly, you on there. Really, you should be ashamed of yourself exploiting these tragedies. There are three missing people right now in Haddonfield. So when fighting monsters, oh. you yourself do not come. Called him an ugly mother effer. Nietzsche also said, without music, life would be a mistake. He's going to show him some kung fu, right? That's right. Yeah, W-U-R-G giving Michael the urge right now. <laughs> Respect for doing the vinyl. <laughs> Oh, whoa, uh. whoa. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Uh. That, that was a specific kill. He's like, watch your tongue when you talk to me from now on. Sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god, awesome. Oh. Finger licking good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I said. I'm sorry, please. And I just want Aww. you to come home. The OGs. Yeah. I've embraced my Michael Myers. I'm not good. I'm surprised she doesn't have a crazy arsenal of weapons like she did in the first film. Nah, she left that life behind. Yeah. There's no way this fixture here spins around to reveal a rack of guns. <laughs> And she fights better when she's drunk, anyways. Yes, I would like to report a suicide. Oh <gasps> no! Dude, you don't need to attack. Just give like 30 more seconds. Interesting pumpkin. Oh, shh. Oh. Did you really think I'd kill myself? Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I have tried so hard to have compassion and find mercy. Oh. You came here to kill me, so do it. <laughs> Did you really think that Allison was going to be with you if I can't have her? Oh! 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 Oh no, oh no, 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 no. What did you do to him? I guess she missed the part where the Michael Myers mask was right next to him. Yeah, I guess so. Uh. 
film hiding in the closet. when she had him pinned with the car. Yeah. Michael. He's dead. 
Not dead enough. Huh. 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 <laughs> now it goes in the trash compactor. Let's show them all. Hey! This is not how it works. It is tonight. <laughs> Evil dies tonight. Guess everyone got the word that they had Michael Myers? It's the murder day parade, man. For 40 years, Michael has terrorized this town. 45 years now, however long. 44, buddy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Our favorite character from the 2018 film. Shit, what was his name? Was it Julian? Yeah. My yes. na my nasty ass toenail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Best line in the movie. My favorite babysitter. Wow. Not like Lori needs to go to the hospital or anything. Nah, she's done that enough times. God, it's it's like reverse Spider Man two. <laughs> Guess everyone in town went from assholes to uh, let's join together in solidarity. <laughs> yeah. Ah, we got our compact kill. Yes. Evil gets crushed into a cube tonight. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Woo. <laughs> Uh, he definitely survived that. Yeah, he'll be back. <laughs> Reports now confirm that Michael Myers has indeed been killed, dead, after an attempted assault of Hatfield resident Lori Strode. What an incredible story of survival through decades of disturbances in our local community. Bet she got the promotion now. <laughs> yeah. New beginnings lay ahead. We just need to kill Michael Myers. Now we'll leave Haddonfield. And we decide when to surrender. I've said goodbye to my boogeyman, but the truth is evil doesn't die. Ten tonight? I wanted you to know I was thinking about you. I want to thank you for what you did. Enjoy. Go see the cherry blossoms, come on. What was it you were saying about those cherry blossoms? Would have thought they would have shredded that too. Here, but now they're gone. Now you got me thinking about the Chucky show. <laughs> All right. Well, Andrew. Yes, Donald. What did you think of Halloween Ends? That was just as brilliant as The Curse of Michael Myers. <laughs> um, Your favorite Halloween. Yes, yes, my favorite one. Andrew, God rest 1995. Um, you, no. Andrew's probably seen all the Halloween films more times than I have, although I think I've seen slightly... There's, there's, there's what one you haven't seen? Well, I didn't see Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, uh, so that was the only one, but I know about The White Horse, so... This has been an interesting experience because I didn't read much going into this movie. Yeah. I made sure to stay fresh. I heard a couple opinions and a couple references, and that was it. But one thing I've been enjoying over the past couple of days is that, you know, if, if anybody knows me, they know I'm a big Rob Zombie fan and a big Rob Zombie Halloween fan. So it's been very gratifying to see Rob Zombie trending on Twitter and so many people being like, Man, after Halloween ends, people better start putting some respect on Rob Zombie's name. And uh, as much as I'm happy about that sentiment going around, just just personally, uh, I I actually didn't uh, I didn't dislike this. It was okay for me. It was okay. Just it felt a little misguided. Um, okay for me. Um, again, I didn't hate this movie. I just want to preface how the most of the comments are gonna be like he hated this movie. It was it was all right. I mean. Uh, it was not what I was expecting. It was definitely a subversion of expectations. I mean, from the ending of Halloween Kills again, 
a movie is not bad because it's not what I was expected. I'm just saying what what I was expecting going into this again, not watching any of the trailers or anything, but from the ending of Halloween Kills, I was expecting Laurie and Allison and Frank Will Patton's character, and even uh, Kyle, uh, Kyle Richards' character. Uh, what's uh, what's Kyle Richards' uh, character's name from uh, the original film? Uh, everyone knows who I'm talking. Lin- Lindsay, right? Sure. The Wallace girl? The Wallace oh, girl? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Wallace, anyways, yeah, yeah. I, I've, I I was kind of expecting more of a, like, a revenge type of, hey, we're going to get Michael for what he did, like, I mean, especially for Lori. So from that perspective, it was definitely different than what I was expecting, and I like some of the ideas in this, you know, because the <laughs> as we pointed out like 900 times in our reaction, the people of Haddonfield, are, they're lovely, they're sweet, they're very caring, they're endearing, they're very nice to to one another, and surprise, the whole town is not full of my, <laughs> Michael Myers, but no, the whole idea of Corey, it's an interesting idea, and I guess the last time we saw something like that being, you know, possibly thought about was with Jamie Lloyd at the end of Halloween 4, and then they kind of just abandoned that in Halloween 5, like, no, nah, we're just, we're just, just going to redcon that. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not going to do it. We're just going to go back to Michael. <laughs> After watching this movie, I can see why they possibly didn't do that. Um, mm-hmm. it, it didn't, I mean, again, it, it still had the spirit of Halloween, of course. With I think the part I loved the most was the ending, just because that felt the most Halloween to me with uh, Lori versus Michael. We got that final, that showdown battle, but I will say it was definitely different and interesting watching, seeing Michael old and decrepit and like, you know, not being his his usual self in, you know, this rampant of destruction uh, and kind of pa- passing on the mantle. But again, the, the idea of what society can do to you and just how people tormenting you, the psychology of it. There are some interesting things that were said in this film that I could appreciate and can understand, you know, from Corey's perspective and I could understand why, again, sympathize with what he has done, and not, you know, not root for him in any way. Of course, it was awful what he was doing, but I could sympathize and understand where he was coming from, why this happened. So, from that perspective, I thought that was well executed. I just don't know if that's what I wanted to see in this Halloween film, mm-hmm. but I guess I appreciate them trying something different. Again, just it just didn't work for me personally. I didn't hate it or anything. It just didn't work for me as a Halloween film. That's just me. But I appreciate them trying to do something different. Yeah, it's funny. The 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 further this movie got, the more I got this feeling of like I am I'm very fascinated and excited to discuss this with people because I have a feeling that there I already get the sense that there are a lot of different opinions and I could see how you might really like this and how you might really dislike this. And and I'm of a couple minds. And it's funny to me because uh one there were two references i heard going into this somebody said it, it, it gave them a christine vibe and mm. somebody said it felt more like a scream sequel and mm. i can understand both of those kind of comparisons uh and yeah it, it, i didn't go into this movie with very many expectations i kind of left halloween kills and was just like you know i'm sure they're gonna do something or other i'm sure it's gonna be a little bit different from that because Halloween Kills is different from Halloween 2018 in certain ways as well. Um, So I didn't spend too much time thinking about what is this movie going to be other than, you know, a slasher movie. (laughs) And so for me, it's like I can definitely fathom this not being what people want or expected, partly because, yeah, like you said uh, early on during the reaction, it's like kind of the longest it takes to get to Michael, and you have to really care about the character of Allison, and Corey here especially, Um, because even Lori, like, Lori is, I think, well used and presented here. Like, you know, Halloween kills, and and with Halloween too, even, like, she's in the hospital, she's not as actively affecting the plot itself. And here, I thought they split the difference where it's like, yeah, there's a lot of time we're not spending with Lori, but there is a lot of significant time spent with her. And yeah, when it finally comes down to her and Michael, that felt appropriately culminative for a Halloween movie. But being that this is Halloween ends, I could see certain people being like, we spent all this time on, you know, these two new characters who maybe you're not that invested in or or something like that. Um, And so, yeah, I feel like that line is going to be different for everybody. And I'm actually sitting here kind of surprised for myself because I enjoyed this much more than I expected to. I I, Halloween, Halloween 2018, when I revisited that, 
before Halloween Kills, I, I expected not to like it as much, and I actually wound up appreciating it about as much as I did the first time, maybe even a bit more. Uh, I, I rather liked it. And uh, Halloween Kills, I d- definitely did not bring back the same goodwill. It, it definitely kind of uh, pushed me off to the other side where it was like, oh, this is this is so repetitive and ridiculous and, and kind of silly now. And, you know, slasher movies often teeter on that edge. And here I... In an in a nut in an isolated uh, scenario, uh, I'll have to step back and think about this. You know, in terms of the pantheon, because it's a big deal to ostensibly end a series like this. But from from where I was sitting, just as a movie on its own, I was actually pleasantly surprised that we were taking so much time to really develop Allison. She's been a part of the past, you know, few movies, but this one seemed like it really cleared the way for her to, you know. Uh, She's not the central character, but she, you know, I, I would argue, I guess, Corey is the central character for a lot of this. But I thought that she was well realized and she grounded everything really nicely. And the Corey story, as much as it, I can, I can imagine it would be a lot for certain folks to swallow. I did at least appreciate. I really, really liked the scene where they talk to uh, little Jeremy's dad. And he says that, that yeah, where yeah. he's like, look, I, I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt. And I even believe that like my, my wife, you know, uh, though understandable, her position is, you know, I, I tried to even look past that and, and say, look, it really was an accident. I want to forgive this guy and maybe help him, you know, past this point. And yeah, the kid who was babysitting my son that night didn't kill him. But whoever he is now isn't the same guy. Like I thought that was good, and I thought uh, Rowan Campbell did a really good job across the movie of starting out charming and starting out as somebody you very much sympathize for and can relate to, and then becoming slowly somebody who you are very horrified by. And and he, he does embody that sort of yeah, there's something wrong in his eyes kind of quality. And so as much as I feel like there's also the aspect that you have to acknowledge of like Michael's been living in this sewer hole for like four years and uh, I guess is just kind of really rubbing off on this dude. Like, again, I can see that being one of those Christine elements where it's like, oh, maybe this is a little much for folks to handle. But in a way, I enjoyed his whatever plot holes you can identify aside. I kind of enjoyed that descent into the madness. Surprised he wasn't living at his house anymore. I guess little John and Big John didn't pay off that mortgage. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, um, yeah, no. You made some very good points. I will say too. Again, just I'm trying not to focus on the negatives. Just things that are just coming to my mind right now. There were a lot of scenes where I'm like, I feel it's a lot of awkward stuff was going on. Like when the mom slapped him, and then just if I thought she kissed him on the mouth, and she then did. yeah, she did, and yeah. I mean, there were a lot of awkward moments I felt too that led to nowhere. I mean, I get where they were going with that scene, but. The relationship, too, between, you know, Corey and Allison, I really understand what they were trying to do with that. I just felt like everything. And again, I, I can understand where she was coming from. She the loss of all her friends, the loss of her parents. She's in a very emotional, and vulnerable place. And she felt she could relate to someone. And this was the guy. I, I totally get that. Totally understandable. I just felt like everything was happening so quickly. And this guy was showing so many different signs that he's not in a position to be in a in a relationship like this and just a lot of red flags and she was just <laughs> kept continuously looking beyond that beyond i like I, I know when he said i killed someone he was talking about the kid so that one i that one i get obviously but some of the other stuff i mean just like the dude was just like again red flag after red flag mm-hmm. i'm like i get it i get what they're going for i get that again she can sympathize and relate to this guy and you know that's why she's so into him i get all that Totally understandable human reaction and emotion, but no, there was just <laughs> too many red flags for me. To, and then just again to just jump on his bus when like he said, oh, your grandma's trying to kill me. And then just like, oh, yeah, yeah, I just believe you. I don't care what my grandma said. It's like I know I know her grandma is paranoid, especially from what we learned in 2018 when they did have a close relationship, uh, Allison and Lori. But I mean, she is a drunk and all that stuff. But just to take this guy's word for it, you've been on two or three dates and he's asking you to move out of town. I'm like, I can suspend disbelief, but there are some stuff here. Like, I'm not saying that can't happen in real life. I mean, people, you know, when when heart, when love and romance is involved, sometimes you just knock sense out of it. But there were just sometimes. Well, I'm like, Allison, what are you doing? Yeah, it it, it it's in the 
it, it butts up against certain things because in the presentation of the movie, it creates this bubble <clears throat> around them where it's like, okay, they are two people who can understand each other in a way few other people can, and it also helps that most people people we see in Haddonfield are kind of shitty in this movie. Kind of, yeah. And I feel like that could have tempered things a little bit if we had... And and I I, I appreciate the the movie doing a certain amount to show, yeah, public perception. People don't understand. People don't take it seriously. People take it very seriously. Like, there's a little bit of everything. But most of the interactions with anybody else in Haddonfield, save for, like, Corey's dad, are pretty negative. And so... (laughs) That, I think, in the immediate experience of watching the movie helps to create that, again, bubble around Allison and Corey. But, uh, yeah, in a more realistically presented town with better adjusted people, you would be like, I feel like you might pick up some of these red flags. Although, again, you like with uh, all the the trauma both of these people have suffered and all the death they've gotten close to. Yeah, again, like I, I wasn't as bugged by it, but I also really can't argue against that point. I, I guess in know? this iteration of Haddonfield, where ninety nine point nine percent of people are pieces of shits and assholes, she's like, you know what? He's the lesser of the assholes. He's like not as bad, even all these red flags. I'm gonna take my chances with this guy. Well, I said during the reaction, I do think it's funny in this movie, maybe even more so than Halloween Kills, because Halloween Kills. I think is arguably the most brutal of the three Blumhouse ones in terms of Michael. Like Michael in that movie is the dark malevolent core and like the, the murders are pretty grim in that movie and pretty harsh. And here, uh, uh, you know, a little less so there's certainly carnage for sure, but, but it's the first time during these three, because again, like I, being a fan of the Rob Zombie movies, I think it's funny that like the Blumhouse ones have kind of taken aspects that worked for many people for, for <laughs> the most agreeable aspects of Rob Zombie's movies, which is the sort of scuzzy uh, harshness of the kills, and then mixed it with the John Carpenter's Halloween aesthetic, the more patient, the more lurking, the more stalking, the more you know slow zoom kind of thing. And uh, and this was the first time I was like. You know, in the Rob Zombie one, yeah, Michael grows up around a very dysfunctional, just Haddonfield. And watching this movie, I was like, yeah, Haddonfield seems like a pretty dysfunctional place. I could totally see how Michael Myers would have come out of this place. <laughs> and so it felt like having that explanation that people don't like back in the mix. Michael, you know? Michael Myers really works for the League of Shadows. He's just cleansing Haddonfield. That's and, you right. know, he works That's for right. Ra's al Ghul, but... You know, it's kind of interesting, too. I'm kind of curious because we saw that there were four writers working on this. David Gordon sure. Green, Danny McBride, and the other two writers that I cannot remember at the time right now of uh, saying this. But, you know, at the end of Halloween Kills, especially with the great scene we got at the in the hospital where, you know, uh, Lori is explaining how Michael's this malevolent force. And we get that scene with her and Frank and the... I really feel like fr- I, f- I, th- I thought that Frank was going to be a bigger part of this film. I feel like he was really pushed to the side. And I get why, again, you got Corey, you got Allison was, you know, a lot bigger role in this film. And Michael was kind of pushed to the sideline a little bit in this film. But I was, I'm really curious to see what the first, you know, their first draft was, if mm-hmm. Frank was this sideline. Because I was really expecting him to have a much bigger role it's at the end of Halloween Kills. Especially that they kind of really, again, I... I I presume most of us, if not all of us, thought he he died in Halloween 2018 when yeah. Doctor Sardine, oh, yeah. uh, Sardine, uh, you know, stuck him in the neck. I, I thought he did at least. Uh, so I thought he was gonna have a much bigger role in this film. But and again, it, that does. I'm not saying that took away my enjoyment or what I did enjoy of this film. But I'm I'm really curious what the first draft was if he had a bigger, more integral part of this uh, of the plot. But because he's barely in the movie. I want to know how many drafts this went through before they a- arrived at and agreed on this particular take. Because, again, like it, it does feel like one of many possible outcomes, minus a couple of things. And I've said this uh, about other movies before, <coughs> where it's like I feel like when you have especially a sequel that has a lot riding on it, it you can fall into... T- two categories or somewhere in between where it's being a sequel or being the sequel or 
an ending versus the ending. And there are moments in this movie, like when Lori is having that final showdown with Michael, kind of anything with Lori uh, does feel like the finale. But there is a lot of other stuff that just feels like, you know, a story for this finale. Uh, having said that, I did appreciate at least what we did get with Frank and the way they built off of that from the previous movie. And yeah, while, while I would certainly have been happy to have had a bigger <clears throat> involvement from him, I do like the way they extrapolated that connection he has with Laurie and their little meat cutes and the way that they're still kind of awkward after that situation. You know, it's not like they all of a sudden happily ever after out of the hospital. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, at least for the the character beats for um, for Lori and for Frank, I, yeah. I liked them together quite quite a lot. Yeah, I agree. They had good chemistry together, on screen yeah. chemistry. But the reason also too, I say I thought Frank would have a little more role is the the great flashbacks we got in Halloween Kills, where it showed like he stopped uh, Donald Pleasance's Doctor Sam Lewis do, or whoever the actor was that that played the the the, the like, aged. Uh, so I thought that it was the, like the tech manager or something like that. Yeah, yeah, whoever it was. But again, they showed that uh, Frank's. Uh, you know, Frank was the cop that stopped Doctor Loomis from putting the final bullet into Michael's yeah. head. So that's why I thought maybe he was going to have a little more of an integral part. But again, you make you make some good points there about him. One other little thing that well, not little thing, but other thing that bothered me too. The, those those group of four kids who were really bullying Cor. Well, not all of them. I know it was more. The, the two males uh, as opposed to the other the two females uh, of the group mm. the two women kept on continuing saying why are you bullying this guy like no stop yet they Just still keep ha- yet they still keep hanging out with these two guys knowing like how terrible these two people are like why are you still hanging out with them continuously <laughs> and and keep on going on with their shenanigans all right don't do this Tim don't do this oh well, we, we're, we're hanging tomorrow though okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's just, but I guess like again, in, in a town this shitty, it's like, well, I guess you're an asshole, but you're not as big an asshole as some of the other people. So I'll still hang out with you. But yeah, I, I guess the buck stops at like, well, we 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 encouraged him to knock it off, and uh, if he doesn't, well, you know, that's his choice. <laughs> Is how it feels from them. But yeah, I, I get you. I, the, it would be. And and again, I mean, like, there's not all the time in the world to spend developing all these characters. No, in a of movie course, like of this. course. But, I, but this yeah. little nitpicks that got like usually when when I'm loving a film, nitpicks like that, I'm like, ah, just yeah. let it go. I don't. Yeah. Those don't bother me. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. The the less you're enjoying, the more glaring all any and all nitpicks and, and, become. And again, I'm not saying I wasn't enjoying. The film was paced fine, and you know there were some stuff in here that I appreciate some some uh, social commentary and messages I did enjoy, but. Again, there was some stuff that from a Halloween film and Halloween fan, just for me, not saying for all of you, for me, that I felt could have been done better, could have been executed better, or just changed entirely and done <laughs> differently. But again, that's me. I'm not in the business. I, I'm not I'm not a professional screenwriter. I know how hard a job these guys are. That doesn't mean they're not susceptible to criticism. Of course they are. That's the job that they got into. But you know, this isn't the way I personally would have done the film. But yeah. I mean, hey, respect for trying something different. Yeah. And I mean, I, I I guess for me too, part of it comes down to like <laughs> Halloween Kills did leave like a kind of silly bad taste in my mouth. So so for me, a- anything being better than <laughs> Halloween Kills is probably like gonna grease my wheels a little bit. But I did think like especially as compared to that movie, I thought the social commentary that movie went for was quite clunky. Like. That movie exists on like a rinse repeat cycle of like the same five lines of dialogue that like all the characters trade. <laughs> it's right, evil dies tonight. I was watching the Red Letter Media review again, and they sort of said like everyone in that movie talks like Loomis, <laughs> and uh, and I kind of yeah, I feel like that's a good way to sum that up. And and here, I at least appreciated that the the parts that were trying to be a little more real life, or at least show how you might both cope with this and how other people around you will cope with it also and and that thing the guy said about like people were taking my trauma and making it about them like i thought this movie had a much uh, more refined hand when doing those things it felt like way more time was spent on this script than was spent on halloween kills um so yeah while it is not Perfect. I thought it was at least a much more smoothly paced experience, minus a few scenes that do feel like there are scenes that cut abruptly and it feels like it's a stylistic choice. And then there are other scenes that cut abruptly where you feel like, ah, they probably needed to trim time here. Um, 
but yeah, I was I was expecting partway through some kind of weird twist where it's like, oh, Michael's actually been dead, and and Corey's just hallucinating him, or something like that. And uh, you know, it was interesting to see how they like. There were times where I I thought they were setting us up for that, and I'm happy they didn't do that ultimately i mean these movies these blumhouse halloween movies fall somewhere in a weird middle ground where it's like michael's not supernatural but kind of <laughs> i guess he's got at least the power of superstition and whatever physical force keeps him going um but i did like again the i'm conflicted about michael living in the sewer hole and like grabbing cory and you know kind of letting him go and whatever he matrixed him he gave him all his knowledge he did yeah 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 and and part of me at the end was like, is he gonna? Is the same thing gonna happen to Lori all of a sudden? <laughs> like, are they gonna flirt again with like Rob Zombie territory, where it's like she's gonna take up the mantle somehow? Um, but I I liked the actual like when we really get late into the movie and Michael is really the presence. Um, I liked just the way that they captured him and the way that they you know dealt with his face and the mask being off. Like when they have him pinned to the the island in the kitchen. Uh, to the butcher block, like even that view kind of up looking, you can't see all of his face and his mouth almost looks like this gaping hole of sorts. And uh, and yeah, like there are images like that and just general tone choices that I thought were were quite nice that 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 built upon that aesthetic of the John Carpenter movie, scuzzed it up a little bit more with, you know, some uh, some 70s-esque, you know, zombie-esque kind of cinematography. And, but And we'd be remiss to not really quickly say, even though you already saw a reaction, Corey had some pretty gnarly kills. I mean, with the, sure. the with Willie the Kid where he cut his tongue off and was just spinning that, around. That, I think, was the hardest. <laughs> was the hardest <laughs> kill. Um, oh, my. And then the blowtorch through the kid's mouth. Oh, my that goodness. That was gnarly, I too. Mean, that was there gnarly. Was um, I mean, yeah, there were some definitely inventive and uh, definitely uh, really visual uh, awesome kills in this. So I appreciated those for sure. So I just wanted to share some stuff I did enjoy. I didn't watch it. I think it was all a bad experience for me. This mm-hmm. was. And I got to hang here with my buddy John. I got to hang here with all of you. So it was definitely a pleasurable experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I thought the prologue was pretty solid. I mean, that's a that's a pretty horrific scenario. That was not what I was expecting at all. Not I was at like, all. Whoa. Oh my goodness! Yeah, Jeez. They, I mean, and they did foreshadow with the camera like craning up three different times, like showing how how, uh, how steep the how deep high the, that, that stairwell, that, that stairwell goes. was. I yeah. mean, and I even mentioned to him like, "That's a really scary stairwell," <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. for good reason. So yeah, no, that was definitely one of the more unexpected prologues, as you would say, in a Halloween film for sure. And that's the thing, I, as I can definitely see that. Not in the prologue specifically, but yeah, like the Corey story, as I've chosen to call it. I can see that being the the um, the genetically enhanced locust story from Jurassic World for a lot of people, where it's <laughs> like, you know, you have dinosaurs and stuff in that movie, but we're going to spend a lot of time on these locusts. We don't care about dinosaurs. We need locusts. Yeah, and, 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 and that bothered me uh, the least, actually, about that. I didn't really mind that. In fact, I thought that was fine. And in this movie, though, I could see a lot of people coming in and being like, I came from Michael Myers, and I got this yeah, guy instead. I can see a lot of people saying that, too. And I guess f- one thing that charmed me a little about that is I thought it was a unique way of playing on the requisite i feel like at least jason and michael and there's probably other slasher franchises as well if they get deep enough uh where you have your requisite installment where it's not actually the slasher character it's just an imposter it's you know somebody who has a vague connection to them somehow who has taken up the mantle because of a psychotic break and here i thought they did kind of neatly to combine the two where it's like, yeah, you have that element sort of within Corey, but you've still very much got Michael. And, uh, and I can see I- I'm still teetering. Like I'm not a hundred percent sure how I feel about like the two of them kind of working together and tag teaming. I'm like, how did you guys coordinate this? Did you, do you just kind of know Michael, I'm going to meet you here, Michael, you meet me over there. Uh, let's just, yeah, at this time, you know how to read a clock and all that, right? Michael, we'll meet there. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Cause like, you know, you watch the pitch meeting for, for Halloween kills and, and it's like, Oh yeah, off camera, Michael must be like dragging bodies around and like, you know, setting stuff yeah. up and yeah, I can already <laughs> see the pitch me too. And how does he get Michael's mask? I can presume it was very hard. Actually, it's very easy. Barely an inconvenience. He just pushes him over. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, and I mean, I guess you could argue that they both have the power of evil, I know, which I is know, why I know. I'm just, I'm just projecting what I see from that video, my pitch meeting video. Well, and I'm not <laughs> even saying that's a good explanation. I'm just saying that, yeah, like it must be the power. Nobody else seems to be able to overpower Michael Myers, but I guess because this kid has snapped, he he can do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I overall, I am pleasantly surprised and i would say i actually enjoyed this i mean there i would go so far as to say there are aspects of this movie that might be my favorite in the blumhouse trilogy but i would probably rank it second out of the three i think the first one is the most solid oh, for sure this one again i was actually i didn't know what to expect but i am pleasantly surprised to have enjoyed it quite as much as i did and then halloween kills is like way it's like way down it, it, instead of that a three i'd put it at like five because like uh, that movie drove me up a wall and so just to be able to like enjoy this movie for the most part was like a, a win for me <laughs> um and i thought all the actors were well cast i think one thing uh, it, people go back and forth on david gordon green's halloween's approach to having side characters and stuff like that and Usually I will always welcome, even if characters just show up to die, if they're a little interesting or they have some kind of quirk about them, I in, I, I appreciate and enjoy that. And so here, even if characters maybe didn't always have the best motivation or maybe if they weren't super fleshed out, usually, minus like the doctor and the nurse who had got the promotion or whatever, uh, usually <laughs> it seemed like the characters at least were... Uh, well inhabited by the actors and um, and yeah I, I thought the the different people who populated this movie were at least uh, a bit memorable and brought you know a, a good amount of flavor you I know could, I could see the casting call right now on the sheet must be the biggest asshole ever yeah br bring <laughs> your bring your jerk face <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, but good kills um, the music um, what do you think of the score? Uh, the, from John Carpenter, from the score? John Carpenter, yeah, Cody I mean, Carpenter, it, and... Uh, it, I mean, it's a John Carpenter, Cody Carpenter score. No complaints from me. If anytime I get a John Carpenter score, I'm happy. My heart is, you know, I love the sounds of a John Carpenter score. And we got a beautiful image of the thi John Carpenter's The Thing. That was so freaking awesome. Uh, I'm so glad I just watched that movie, too, uh, like a month or two back so I could understand what movie because I would have hated myself if we would have watched that scene and I'd be like, what movie is that? And I see Kurt Russell. What movie is this? I don't know. Well, and in the original, aren't they watching the thing from outer space? Yeah. yeah. That, oh, the there you go. There's a remake of, uh, which that's a cool, like, Easter John egg. John put an Easter, Easter egg. egg in an Easter egg yeah. from an Easter egg. Now they're watching the Carpenter one. Oh, Holy my God. shit. <laughs> now, now when they reboot Halloween one day again, then they're gonna watch the the prequel to the sure, thing. Sure, definitely. Gotta just make it a three <laughs> thing. Third time's a charm, baby. Twenty eleven's the thing. Woo! <laughs> Dang. Well, all right, man. Any final thoughts? Um, no, nah, it's just uh, this was different. Uh, I, again, I still thought there were moments I really enjoyed. Again, I respect that they tried to do something different uh there was a lot of subversion of expectations which seems to be a big hollywood trope nowadays like we're not going to do what you're expecting hmm. which is fine again that doesn't mean i'm not going to like it just because what i'm expecting was not in there it's all about execution and is the storyline interesting are some of the characters fleshed out in a way that i feel you know is makes the plot interesting and just works uh with the actors as well and again there were times in this i did like and times in regards to is this a top tier hollywood halloween film I wouldn't go that mm -hmm. far. I would say it's more on the middle, the lower spectrum. But again, I, I still had a good time. Uh, it was a fun watch. It was a fun reaction. Um, but uh, yeah, again, respect for trying to do something different. Yeah, I would put this probably. I would actually probably put this upper upper middle, depending. Because how many films deep are we now? <laughs> We're quite like deep. I mean, we got Halloween 1, Halloween 2, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. The fifth one is uh, the, Revenge the Revenge of Michael, Michael Myers, Myers, the best the, one ever. And the, and the Curse of Michael Myers. And then t H2O. And then the best one ever by Rick Rosenthal, Resurrection. And then we got Rob Zombie's 2007 version. Then we got the Halloween sequel, this 2009. Then we got the 2018. Then Halloween Kills. And then we got this one. So this is the 13th movie. <laughs> I lost count when I was naming them all. <laughs> or something, yeah. I, you know what? Yeah, I guess I would still put this, yeah, pretty high mid. I I, I mean, I did appreciate, and I like Halloween H2O. And I, I thought, love Halloween H2O. And there was a lot about that send-off that I, I liked, but I did like the send-off. Like, as much as it's been inconsistent, the way Haddonfield 
thinks about and responds to Michael over these three movies, especially acknowledging like it was just a few murders in the 70s in that first one and then completely 180-ing that sentiment for Halloween Kills. Uh, I thought the send-off here where the whole town gets together and they strap him to the police car and they trash compact him they, they they take him to the junkyard like and just the way that was captured and all the people kind of opening up in in, in like the seas in front of moses as yeah. laurie steps up and yeah. everything like i thought all that stuff was was pretty gripping and yeah i thought the cast was good i thought uh for the most part i liked at least that they wanted to pay attention and to tell a sort of twisted story of people bonding over and trying to alleviate trauma i really liked Lori. i liked the bookends of her writing her book and trying to move on and making that conscious effort and even celebrating halloween and encouraging getting back into normal life yeah for sure i mean and she also she saw rob zombies halloween too she saw how much (laughs) dr loomis profited off writing a book so she's like i gotta get in i gotta get in on this action also too i wish we would have saw the the moment where you know the I'll admit the imagery was really cool where the whole town came together to send off Michael into the compactor. Like, that was great. No, I love, again, the imagery was great. I just wish they would have shown us, everyone, Michael Myers is dead. Let's all come together and send him off. Like, <laughs> like where did they all come from? Like, they were all sleeping eh. in their... In, I, I know it's a small town. I get all that. But again, these, these, some of these nip... I'm telling you, CinemaSins is going to have fun with this film and some of these other channels. They're going to have a good time with this movie. <laughs> I'll, I'll, give them, I'll give them the stylistic not showing us how... We don't yes, care. But yes, CinemaSins... Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, but CinemaSins, I'm sure. Any slasher movie is is prime fodder for a, for a show like that. But... uh but yeah, for for me, is certainly not as many as many nitpicks, and even some things that they they managed to win me back over on. So, um, even if for a lot of people this isn't like the satisfying definitive ending, I at least appreciate it being an assured swing. <laughs> Whereas the previous movie did not feel like that. Um, I, I feel like this one is at least a swing, and it's committed to what it's swinging for, and uh, I got respect for that. Fair enough. So, Fair enough. Uh, I agree with you on that. So, yeah. People, what did you think of Halloween Ends? What did you think of this Blumhouse trilogy and how it complements the original films? What's your favorite Halloween film? Leave us all your Halloween-related thoughts down below, and we will see you in a couple years when they inevitably <laughs> reboot the franchise or make a sequel directly to one of the other installments, ignoring several other installments. <laughs> hey, we, when that happens, we'll be back. But for right now, be well, and we'll catch you next time. But not before we do a Patreon. <laughs> Pandemic Jones. Pandemic you know what I thought of during this movie? They said in the lead up uh, when they were talking about what they were going to be tackling with this time jump. And they in the, in the press stuff early on, they made it seem like it was going to be a way bigger time jump. But they said it was going to deal with the pandemic and it didn't whatsoever. <laughs> uh, but it made me think of you, Pandemic Jones, and how you are the purest heart at our Patreon. If anybody could go through what a guy like Corey went through and not turn to the dark side... It's you, buddy. You got a kind, uh, lovely demeanor, and you have gentle eyes that could never reflect evil. And we're glad to have you with us each and every day. Evil is always dead when Pandemic Jones is around tonight or any night, doesn't matter. And uh, hey, we love you, buddy. Stay pledged, and uh, we'll catch you next month. Any any special words for PJ? Sick name. I love it. Hell's yeah. yeah. Really cool. Dude, be well, and we'll catch you next time.